Thank you, Lord, God. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. You guys may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So on my way to, a, to another testimony, I got a testimony because that's how God worked. But I was, I was moving. I was real busy, and I had to do some stuff. I had to take care of some stuff. So I go to my car, and I accidentally left my light on in my car, so my battery dead. So now I'm tripping. I got, I got jumper cables and all that. Um, so I go to get my jumper cables, and I uh, come back outside, the neighbor's outside, and um, he flagged me down. He go, you, you need a battery? And I'm... I'm kind of confused because he said he didn't say you needed a jump, right? Okay. He said you needed a battery. So I'm like, yeah, I need a battery. So he go follow me. So I follow him. He said my daughter uh, was having car troubles. I thought it was her battery, so I bought a brand new battery. Um, but it turned out to be a starter. But if you can carry this battery over to your car, then you can have it. Oh. Oh. Put it in there, started right up on the first turn, started right up, stupid powerful, right? That's God. So now I'm on my way to my real testimony. So I get a call uh, from the institution uh, talking about can they speak to Jalen McGinnis. I'm like, yeah, I'll go by that, I'll go by that, that's that's me. He say, um, well, this is your um, supervisor, Max Clark, and I know that um, we're waiting for your paperwork and some clearances to, to come back for you to um, start the job at the institution where I'll be supervising inmates, clean All up, right. right? So I'm like, yeah, it's taking a while. He said, well, I got this opportunity. I want to know um, if I can <laughs> offer to it, offer you to, um, offer it to you, Amen. see if you want it, right? See if you're interested. So I'm like, talk to me. So he said, well, it's about 30 hours a week. Um, it doesn't have any benefits, but I wanted to know if you'll be able to take this. I want you on the clock. So while we're waiting for your main position to open up, While you wait for an even bigger blessing. If I can pay you. Hallelujah, Lord. Right on time. We're just talking to Pastor how this stuff is about to clear, but I'm gonna keep working for it. I'm gonna keep working, you know, I'm not tripping about that. Amen. It's gonna clear, you, right? The man called me and asked me if I want to get paid while I wait. Yeah. He said when it cut when that position clear, I can test on the job. I could take my exam on the job, okay. and while that paperwork yes. clear, I'll still be on this position. Then they'll transfer me to the full benefit, full benefits, full medical, all that, full time, all that. And then he finished that up and say, are you interested? I say, show you right. Sign me up, right. Sign me up. You show me. In between that, we was doing work here. Yeah. We was working for the kingdom. All we were right. progressing the kingdom. Amen. We building the kingdom. We yeah. adding to. We didn't stop uh, midway through. We didn't stop uh, because we were waiting for this or uh, I didn't have the gas money uh, so Amen. I couldn't make it or uh, I'm stressed out about this job so I can't work for you All guys. Right. That didn't work. That's right. That didn't happen. Amen. We kept focus here. We kept building. We kept Amen. digging. Yes. We kept cutting oh, here, trimming yes. stuff back. And because of that, God tramped some stuff back on my part. Hallelujah. God put some stuff back on my part. Took the enemy away. So now we're able to flourish. We got new growth in the fall. Hallelujah, Lord. And we're going to praise this thing out. We're going to celebrate it because God is still alive today and forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Before we go to the word, while you're yet standing, I just want to make mention of some truly wonderful people. Amen. Amen. How you like this sign? How you like this sign? Yeah, that's because we have such a great sound department. Amen. And in that sound department that's growing mightily. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have people that are not even in the department, really, but they make things happen. Amen. 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 They make things happen. And I just want to give God some praise for, for uh, Minister Erica. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
took all the sound up and the men that came out. Amen. It worked. Amen. Amen. You know, they could hear us now in the nursery as we Woo! speak. Right now. So the nursery workers could hear the word. Amen. People out in the foyer could hear the word. You understand? Because we have men that come out and work. Amen. Amen. And they dug the trenches and things. And Amen. And uh, buried the cables underground. Didn't even have to be because the cables we bought were weatherproof. Go outdoors, but we just do everything in the spirit of excellence. And I want to thank God for those of you that come out here and work during the week on the weekends. The cleaning Amen. crew come in here on Saturdays early in the morning cleaning. Amen. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful situation that we're in. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you that help with your time, your, uh, your money, your sweat and tears and Amen. everything. Amen. Amen. We have some truly, truly Amen. wonderful people here at the Power of Love Amen. community. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand, praise. Amen. Let's give him some glory. Turn to his good neighbor. The one neighbor just give him a great big hug and tell him you are in for a treat this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. And you may be seated in his midst. Amen. This morning, our scripture will come from the book of John, in the 8th chapter of the book of John. We'll read the 54th through the 58th verse of John 8. And then we'll get Genesis 22. John 8, 54 through 58. Amen. Now, notice there's a lot of verses in this chapter, amen? A whole bunch of them. So, in order to give you the background, we're not going to read the whole chapter because it, it starts in the first verse. But what we have here in this first verse, well, in this chapter, Jesus went out, he's preaching, he's healing people, he's doing the miracles that proves that he was sent by God. While he's preaching, this is while he's preaching, you got the scribes and the Pharisees. Didn't come to hear the word, didn't come to grow. They just came to criticize, amen? You know, you have that in church, you know what I'm saying? People don't come to church for the word, they come to see what's wrong with the church, amen? And uh, if they look in the mirror, they figure that out before they left the house. They save themselves a trip. But I got a group of people that come to church, amen, amen. to hear the word, to grow their body, amen, and uh, become everything that God intended for them to be. But you can always have the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these religious people that don't have any power, okay. just a bunch of tradition and a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. So while Jesus is preaching here, here comes a group of folks brought a woman into the synagogue, threw her on the floor at Jesus' feet and said, Jesus, this woman was caught right in the act of adultery. So what we going to do? You know what the law says we going to do, we should do. The law says we should stone her, kill her. This woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Now, I'm sure if they commit an adultery, they're not out in the middle of the street. I'm sure they tried to be, keep it up. Somebody had to go and look to find this head. So they grabbed the woman in the act of adultery, bring her to the synagogue, throw her at Jesus' feet, and say, what should we do? They had stones in their hands ready. You know, today's time, they'd have had glocks and, and, and all kinds huh? of Uzis and things ready. We're going to crucify her. She was caught in the act of adultery. But don't it take two? Amen. That's puzzling to me why she was the only one 
brought, but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother time. But uh, here it is. They brought her through it. Just, what should we do? And you all know the story. You biblical scholars know the story. Okay. Jesus started writing in the dirt, you know, wrote some stuff in the dirt, got up, and said, all right, you know what the law says we're supposed to do, but let's do it like this here. Any of you that are without sin, have not sinned before, you fire off the first round. Cock your block right now and get ready to start firing off because we're getting ready to do what y'all want us to do. So let's get it cracking right now. Let's get this thing going. If you haven't never seen, start busting, bust if you've never seen. They had to drop the Glocks, the Uzis, the Nines, the 38s, the 45s. They had to drop them All right. the and walk out. They said from the eldest to the youngest. That meant them old ones. They'd been around a while. They, they had a whole bunch of sins. So they was the first one to drop theirs. And they said, let's get on up out of here. Because I, I can't bust. I can't throw a stone. So I got a whole bunch of sins. So, here it is, Jesus preaching. Now, he's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. They want to know, how can you tell this woman her sins are forgiven? Because he said, ask her. He said, now, baby, where are your accusers? Where are the ones that accused you? The one that went wherever you were, behind the bushes, or, and snatched you. Where are they now? She said, I don't have any. He said, I don't accuse you either. Go thy way, daughter. He's sin no more. Thank you, Jesus. The scribes and the Pharisees, yes. they didn't leave. They said, who is he going to tell her her sins are forgiven? Hmm. How he had the audacity to tell this woman, yes. go her way, sin no more. Mm -hmm. How can he say that to her? Mm -hmm. Who does he think he is? How can he say that to her? Well, Jesus said it like this here. Don't worry about who I think I am because I know who I am. All right, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And see, and if you really love God as you claim, you would know who I am. Amen. But since you don't really love God, you just come in the church to see what's wrong. You just come in the church to see who ain't getting along. You just come in the church to see who's screwing who. You just come in the church to try to find some dirt. You just come in the church. To... And since that's the case, you don't know nothing about God. He's told them you are of your father, the devil. That's what he told him. See, that's what I liked about Jesus. He didn't bite his tongue. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and you lie like your devil, father, and there's no truth in him. There's no truth in you either. Amen. You see? Everything Satan tells you is a lie. Yes. He can't tell you the truth. Amen. Truth ain't in him. He's the father of lies, and the truth is nowhere to be found in him. So why are you listening to Satan? All right. Why are you listening to Satan when there's no truth in him? Well. He's told him, he said, now if you believe in God, you will believe me. Because see, God's children hear the Father's voice. Amen. And the voice of the stranger, well. they will not follow. Amen. So since you're not following me, you don't know nothing about God. Because, see, if you believe God and you believe me, you will never die. Amen. Oh, they got upset when he said that. Oh, they got upset. How you going to tell us that we are, if we believe in you, we'll never die? Our father Abraham, the father of our faith, is dead. All the prophets of old are dead. So what are you saying, Nate? All the prophets are dead. Our father Abraham is dead. 
And you're going to tell us that if we believe in you, we had never die. And our father, Abraham, is dead. That's the first uh, about, what, 55 verses Amen. in a nutshell. Amen. Now, read the 56. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. You say he's your God. Come on. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. Mm, I'll be lying like you. I'll be lying like you. <laughs> but Jesus I just didn't buy this time. He told folks exactly who they were. Amen. He didn't buy this time. All this sugar coating stuff. <laughs> Trying to be politically correct. And all this old nonsense. Well, ain't today. What's today's day? What's the day? What's that? Yeah, I know, but what is it? Sunday. Huh? Sunday. What else? Sunday. Halloween. How, what else? Halloween. Halloween. The Devil's Day. Yeah, yeah. Halloween. All right. Now, this is how crazy the world is. Let me tell you how crazy the world is. You can't go. You got to have a costume to go to school because they celebrate Halloween. So all the children got to have a costume. Go to school celebrate Halloween. Costume, gotta have costume. Gotta wear costume tomorrow. Mama, you gonna get us a costume. Halloween, you gonna get us a costume. But you can't say Christmas. You can't say Christmas. You can't say Christmas at work. You gotta call it Xmas. You gotta X out Christ. And let's just spend money. Don't make you go, hmm. But back to this here. Here it is. Here it is. Jesus now is telling them. Read that again, preacher. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. I'm not honoring myself. Go ahead. It is my father that honoreth me, mm -hmm. of whom ye say that he is your God. Mm -hmm. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. See, I know him. Y'all don't know Because if you knew him, we wouldn't be all caught up in all this nonsense Amen. that we caught up in. Amen. But I know him. Go ahead, preach. But I know him mm -hmm. and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Your father, Abraham, the one y'all bragging about, the one y'all claim y'all so related to and tied into, that Abraham I'm talking about. He rejoiced to see my day. He rejoiced to see my day and was glad to see it. What they say after that? Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, You're not even fifty. We know you nuts, man. Abraham been dead hundreds of years. This man ain't fifty yet. And he talking about Abraham saw it. Abraham saw him. He saw. He ain't. Not even 50, Abraham been dead hundreds of years. What did he say? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, if that's not Mackin, I don't know what it is. Amen. Before Abraham was, yes. I am. They put so much stock in Abraham, and there was a reason for it. And we're going to find out why they did that. But Jesus had to let them know, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am. Now we're going to go to Genesis and find out how.
how did Abraham become so great? How did he become that? Well, Genesis 22 going to let us know. Genesis 22 and the first chapter. Go ahead and read the first. We're going to start in one here. Go ahead and read it. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. The only son you have left whom thou lovest. You love this boy. Because see, he has another son named Ishmael. But Sarah, Trip, got jealous, you understand, sent Ishmael and his mama away into the wilderness. So now he only got one son left. This is only son. This is the son of promise. That God promised him, he's 90 something years old, when God gave him the promise that he would have a son and his wife's womb was dead. She almost 90. And it didn't come to pass until he was 100. Amen. Now, this years later, he only got one son left. And now God is testing him. Go ahead, preacher. Thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a blunt burnt offering upon one of the Watch mountains. Watch out now. The blunt, that's burnt. <laughs> <laughs> for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. He's telling him, now take your only son. And this is what I want you to do with your only son you got left. I want you to take him to Mount Moriah, the region. There's a bunch of hills. About seven of them. Where Jerusalem is today. It wasn't called Jerusalem. It was Mount Moriah. It's the citadel where the city of Jerusalem is right now. And there were about seven hills in this region right here. So I want you to take your only son to this mount. And I want you to kill him. Burn him up as an offering, a sacrifice unto me. This is what God told Abraham to do. Go ahead, preach. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Early in the morning. And saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. Put a saddle on his donkey and went and got two servants to go with him. Keep reading, preach. And Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lift up his eyes and saw the place afar off. They've been traveling three days. This wasn't no up the road trip. This journey took them three days and they ain't got there yet. He lifted up his eyes and he now he see the mountain range of fall. Keep reading, preacher. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. He told the two servants, Stay here with the donkey. Me and my son going up here to worship God. Me and my son will be back. Me and my son coming back. Keep reading, preach. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. He took the wood off the donkey. He put the wood on his son's back. And said, son, you see that mountain range of fall? That's where we go. So let's start hiking. I got the knife. I got the fire. The wood is on your back. Let's go. Keep reading, preacher. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here I am my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering his son his only son said dad you know I've seen this thing happen before okay. I know how sacrifices work 
I know you got to kill something for the sacrifice. I, I know some blood's got to be shed. I know something got to die in order for us to do this sacrifice. He said, Daddy, I, I see the wood is on my back. He said, Daddy, I see the fire is in your hand. Daddy, I see the knife is, your hand, is in your hand. He said, but Dad, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? They still walking. They got to go up this mountain once they get to it. The man been traveling for three days. I can imagine the hell he had to go through. I got to take my boy, take him up to this mountain and kill him and set him on fire and burn him up. What am I going to say when my son asks me, where is the lamb? He's seen me kill animals before, bulls, goats, lambs, sheep, doves, whatever, and he knows something got to die. But what am I going to tell my son? He got to drive three days wondering what's going to happen. And then he got to walk all the way up the mountain. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Three days. Three days. Yes. They kept going. Daddy, where's the lamb? What did his father tell him? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them. God together. will provide for himself. You need to write that down. Circle that. Highlight it. Whatever you want to do to it. God will prepare a sacrifice for who? Himself. That's important. Keep reading briefly. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Did y'all hear that? He took the wood off his son. He put it in order so it'll burn real well. You know how to start a fire. You got to put the wood a certain way. So air could get onto it and it catch him. Y'all know how to burn. It's our fire. Amen. So he had to put the wood in order to make sure it burnt well. And then he had to tie his son up. He had to take his son and tie him up, bind him up, because he knew once he put him on that altar, he wasn't just gonna lay there. So he had to bind him up, then put him on the wood. Now I could imagine. What he had to whisper in his son's ear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. Come, on, Come on. I preached this about 12 years ago on camera. I took a little boy, about, he was about two, yes. laid him on the podium on some wood had a torch, a lid in the house. The boy was about two years old, laid him on the podium with the wood, brought a torch, a lid, fire going, had a big old knife in my hand, put the baby on the altar, <laughs> drew back the knife with the fire in my hand, When I drew back like this here, the boy's mother said, <gasps> That was Peggy and I, about 12 years ago. Now, 12 years later, it's more realistic. Come here, eyes. Because, see, a two year old couldn't carry wood. Come on. On his back. Up a mountain. So the boy had to be at least big enough and strong enough okay. to put wood on his back. Yeah. And he walk all the way to the mountain. Yeah. And then walk all the way up the mountain. On, now I gotta bind this boy up. Yeah. Now I gotta yeah. lay him on the altar. Mm -hmm. Get ready to kill him. <laughs> Lit the drew the knife. And what happened? 
And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Here, Abraham. Abraham, Abraham said, Here I am. Go ahead, preacher, read it. And he said, Lay not thine hand, Lay not thine hand on the lad. Don't touch him. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Now I know. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Now I know that you trust God. Amen. Because you were willing to give up your only son. All right. Amen. You were willing to make a sacrifice. Yes. But he says, since you're willing to give up your only son, mm -hmm. you don't have to. Thank you, Thank you Lord Jesus. I got a ram in the bush for you. Come on. Since you were ready, you don't have to. All I needed to know was would you? That's all I needed to know was would you? So what happened? And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Mm -hmm. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. It shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad. Mm. Abraham is on Mount Moriah getting ready to sacrifice for God. Come on. Yeah. He looks up. God got this hill is only a hundred or so feet away. He looks up and sees what all the prophets been waiting for. He looks up and sees what all the holy men of old been writing about. He looks up and sees because you were willing to sacrifice your son, you don't have to. I'm going to sacrifice mine. I'm going to give up mine because you were willing to give up yours. And because I'm going to give up mine, it's not just going to save you and your household. It's going to save every household come to this earth from here to eternity because you were willing to sacrifice I'm going to make the ultimate sacrifice. And I'm going to show you a little something. Open your eyes, Abraham, while you're up on top of this mountain. And see, I want to know who's going to rise up this morning. Who's going to rise up and come to the top of the mountain? Who's going to wake up this morning and come to the top of the mountain and sacrifice? Who's going to get up and say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die? It ain't nothing I got to do good for God. It ain't nothing I got to too good for you, God. I'll give you anything you ask me for because I know you're great. I know if I kill my son, you will raise him back from the dead. If I burn him up, you will make the ashes stand up and walk. If I kill him, that is that you will put it back together because you're just that kind of God. And because you trust me, Abraham, I'm going to make you the fathers of many nations. Everybody on the earth going to be blessed because of what you just did. Everybody you know going to be blessed because of what you just did. If you want to give up your business, I'll give it back. I'll raise it back up. If you lose a relationship, I'll bring it back up. Whatever you got to go through, I'll go through it with you. Whatever you got to go through, I'm right there with you. Every step of the way, I got a ram in the bush. My name is Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. I'm your way maker. I got what you need. All I got to know is will you sacrifice? That's what I need to know. Did you hear the offering this morning? Did, I said, boy, if we not in the spirit this morning, if we not, did you hear how to? Come on! 
Did you hear the testimonies this morning? Whatever you sacrifice for God, whether it's your time, whether it's your work, whether it's your energy, whether it's your money, whether it's your love, whether it's your peace, sometimes you got to sacrifice peace just to get along with a crazy Negro, but you got to sacrifice it. Sometimes you got to sacrifice a job just to get to your business, but you got to sacrifice it. Sometimes you got to sacrifice your money just to open up windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing because God always has the rain for you. But there's some points that I need you to understand. Number one, God's plan for our lives are specific. There were at least seven heals. He had to go to the one that what God told him to go to. See, sometimes we could be in the wrong ministry. Sometimes you in the wrong place, but we got to go where God told us to go. You can't be because you're in some place. That's why I tell you all the time, this ministry ain't for everybody. Amen. It's not for everybody. I doubt very seriously if there were seven goats. Come on. On each one of the mountains. I doubt very seriously. Like God had one ram. But he had to follow God's instruction. Number two, he didn't procrastinate. That's what's wrong with most of us. God tell us to do something. We got to wait three days to go do it. You understand? By the third day, it's already done. Somebody else done already done it and got the blessing already while we sitting up procrastinating. Or we got to go talk to our friend. Girl, what you think? Now, what if Abraham had to did that? What if he had to go to his friend? Uh, hey, Doc, uh, God told me to take Isaac up to the mountain and sacrifice. His friend would have probably said something like this. Doc, didn't you say Isaac was the son of your promise? Didn't you say that Isaac was the promise? Didn't you tell me a couple of years ago that he's going to be the father of many nations? And they all going to come through Isaac? Doc, if you go kill him, how that's going to happen? Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with going to your mentors, somebody that's been through some things. You understand? Somebody that's unraised families. Somebody that's accomplished something in life. Somebody that's doing great things. It's okay to go to them because they'll probably tell you, well, if that's what God told you to do, do it quick. Hurry up and do it because he will make a way. But see, sometimes we talk to the wrong people that ain't got a dime. Ain't got a pop or a piss in or a window to throw it out of. But we want to go ask them for advice. Come on. He got up early the next morning. Didn't tell nobody, his friends, none of them. These two boys, get put the wood on that and let's go. He got up and got on the good foot. Thank you, Lord. He didn't wait. He didn't look for nobody else's opinion. Amen. He did what God told him. And what the third point you got to remember is always. No matter what circumstance and situation comes along, you always talk about the promises of God. You never let the promises of God out your mouth. I don't care if I kill the boy. God promised me that this would be the son. So if I kill him, I know God's going to raise him back up. Me and the lad will be back. You got to speak the promises. You got to speak them. Always speak the word only. And then the fourth and last one, Abraham acted on what he believed. He took the three-day journey. He pound up his son. He put him on the altar. He lit the torch. He drew back the knife. He acted on what he believed to the point where his son brought believing. His son laid there wasn't worried about a thing. Because if you believe, I believe, God. If you believe, God, I believe, God. Daddy, I'm going to lay here do what you need to do. See, sometimes our faith to help our protégés, but we start talking about the wrong stuff. We start acting stupid. Now, when your faith is supposed to be so strong that it'll let... Can you imagine what a time I'd have trying to tie Isaac up and put him on a fire? Come on! 
See, your faith can be strong enough that it'll touch somebody else. Amen. If we grow up. Amen. And quit tripping. Yes. Amen. Grow up and quit tripping. Amen. And then what do we see? We see what everybody's been wanting to see. He looked and he saw God's sacrifice. His son. He said, Abraham saw my day and was glad. Amen. How many of y'all ready to see Jesus? Hallelujah. How many of y'all ready to see Jesus? You know, we celebrate Halloween, all this. But how many ready to celebrate Jesus this morning? How many ready to celebrate Jesus this morning? How many ready to worship the Lord this morning? He said, we're going up to the mountain to worship. We're going up to the mountain to sacrifice. Well, I'm asking somebody to sacrifice this morning. I'm asking somebody to bless the Lord this morning. I'm asking somebody to close this month out on this day where the world is celebrating Satan and demonic things. I'm asking somebody to let's celebrate God this morning. Amen. Who's going to sacrifice this morning? Who's going to bless God this morning? Who's going to step out in faith this morning? Who's going to worship the Lord this morning?